Hello and welcome to the last chapel of the on-campus semester for spring 2020. Uh, for some of you, you are uh, starting your, I think, third class in your online uh, program if you're online with us. And for many of you, you are finishing up a semester, whether it's uh, on campus or in the graduate studies, I believe. Um, but just congratulations to everyone for where you are at. And as we uh, finish up this year, uh, this is always a special chapel because every year our last chapel of the semester in the spring ends up being our senior send-off chapel. So after I talk for about 10 minutes, you'll get to hear uh, some of your uh, student peers, uh, graduates, um, giving their best 60 seconds as to uh, what they uh, learned at Grace and what they want to pass along to those that are going to be graduating in the future. So we always look forward to that, and that'll be coming up at the end of my time. But today I wanted to just give a couple of announcements and then start off with a short thought about a few things that uh, that I've been working through. Uh, just a couple of announcements. National Day of Prayer is next week, uh, I believe the 7th. Take a look on our websites for um, information regarding how we are going to honor and celebrate that day. Uh, we are also having an all staff and faculty meeting on the 5th. So if you are staff and faculty, make sure that you have that circled and that you are present virtually for that. Uh, again, um, if you're a graduate student who is finishing up a master's, uh, what a great celebratory time it is for you. Uh, if you are an associate's uh, um, degree student, uh, receiving an associate's uh, in our online modality or our on-campus, congratulations to you. And if you are graduating in our, with a bachelor's in our online or on-campus modality, congratulations to you. These are fun times. Even though this is a difficult season that we're in for COVID-19, uh, we can still celebrate uh, with you as you have put in the work. Student Affairs often says it's important for people to go through, to work through hard things for long periods of time. Uh, we believe that education is countercultural to a lot of things that um, are being thrown at us in our in our society today. Um, education is doing something difficult for a long period of time, and so this will build a uh, character in you that uh, you'll use for years and years to come. With that being said, um, uh, let's start with a word of prayer, and we'll jump right into a little message. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Uh, thank you for uh, tomorrow's uh, ceremony, while it might not be the normal ceremony that we're all used to, uh, we do want to take time to pause and to celebrate and to encourage as we uh, send um, students out into the world, uh, send our graduates um, so that they can uh, be flaming arrows and mustard seeds uh, as they spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to uh, chaotic and K. Uh, uh, in a society that is a little bit crazy. Lord, help us to uh, continue to look to you for all of our guidance during these times. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, one quick thing I wanted to talk about today uh, that's been talked about a few times um, here and there uh, throughout the chapel series of our year uh, of uh, authenticity as being our theme, and that is authentically encountering God. Um, I was on a five-day hike uh, through the Grand Teton Mountains my senior year of high school. And on the fourth day, uh, I was uh, sent up this rock face as we were doing some low-level um, climbing. Uh, it wasn't anything very scary, but it was hard work because it was the first time I had ever done that. We started off early in the morning, and I was the first one to go. And uh, by the time I got to the peak of that climb, which took about 25 minutes, um, the sun started to come up over the mountains that morning. That was early on in the day. And so I was able to sit at the top of that rock face and watch the sun climb over the Grand Teton Mountains. And the guide that I was with uh, referenced Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Um, sometimes when we get caught up in the day-to-day -day, uh, whirlwind of life, uh, sometimes it can be hard to find God at the center of every one of uh, our dealings throughout the day. Um, but I do challenge you as you continue to search him 
and uh, search after him, he will continue to reveal himself to you in authentic ways. Um, I believe I had a mountaintop experience where uh, God kind of met me where I was. And Hebrews 11, 1 has been one of my favorite verses to live by ever since. Again, um, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Um, and there was another experience where I had uh, a really uh, uh, connected moment with God, and that is um, my senior year of college. Uh, I came back to my house that I was living in at the time off campus and uh, sitting in the living room on a Friday afternoon after classes for the week. And I had some very big uh, questions I was asking God at the time. And it, it was through a series of prayers and uh, time alone spent with him. And uh, when I asked him some difficult questions uh, in a darkened living room over on the west side of Grand Rapids, uh, near near uh, Lake Michigan Drive, um, God showed up in that living room and shared with me some very strong wording that really launched me into a couple different areas. And so those are a couple of sightings that I've had encounters with God, but it was due to the fact that I was encountering him authentically. And so you might ask, you know, how do I do that? Uh, there's a lot of ways, obviously, to do that, but I would start with your spiritual disciplines. Um, what are you doing for the music that you're putting in your brain uh, What are you in, in, in your heart? What are you doing uh, for the, the literature that you're putting in your brain? Are you reading the Bible um, daily? Are you praying daily? Are you uh, asking him questions that someone in a relationship would ask someone else? Um, I think God desires that of us to have those relationships where we ask him hard questions and where we come to him during time of triumph and during time of need. Uh, I had a triumph of you know, reaching that mountaintop. I also had uh, a difficult time when I was in uh, that darkened living room um, navigating life in some hard ways. Uh, think of Hebrews 11.1, 1, he shares where he's with us uh, throughout the times when we triumph. And we also know that uh, Philippians uh, 4.13 tells us that uh, we can do all things through Christ, uh, even during the hard times. Um, you look at uh, something like uh, Isaiah 41, which is a really good um, uh, uh, book to get a lot of information from. But as we kind of go after uh, uh, different ways to navigate um meeting Christ, uh, meeting him where he can meet us, I challenge you to think uh, through um, what that looks like. Uh, COVID-19, when this all started, there was a, a man who um, owns a marketing firm on Instagram. He talked about the four ways to be someone uh, in our society during COVID-19. Uh, he says you can be a victim, you can be a villain, you can be a guide, or you can be a hero. And I think about those four um, different personalities that we could take on in a time of struggle or crisis. Um, obviously, uh, being a victim means that you're looking at uh, different ways to be hurt, be oppressed, uh, be singled out. Um, uh, if you're a villain, obviously, you're looking for ways to hurt someone or something by taking advantage of this time. If you're a guide, you're helping others. And if you're a hero, you're creating something that will um, sustain and be a helpful um, uh, piece to um, our public. So being civic minded. Um, and so I ask you kind of which one have you been and which one will you want to be in the future? Um, you might be asking yourself, well, why me or, or how could I do anything? I'm only... X, Y, or Z. Maybe you're a prospective student and you're thinking, I'm not even a great student yet. How could I be um, a hero or a guide? Um, maybe you're a student who's an underclassman and you're thinking, well, I, I'm not a graduate or anything of grace, so how could I be prepared to um, be a hero or a guide? Maybe you're someone who's middle-aged and your students or your children are now graduating and you're wondering, <clears throat> did I lose my opportunity uh, to be a voice in this world now that I'm a little older. 
how can I be a hero or a guide? Uh, maybe you're someone who is has a little bit more experience in life and maybe you are retired in your home and you're able to think and you're able to love people and you're able to do other things. Um, uh, and you might be thinking to yourself, how could I be someone that is uh, helpful during this time or be a guide uh, during this time? I often think about our student handbook um, and that's weird that I think about our student handbook, but once you read our student handbook at Grace, you see that there is some really good stuff in there. And I look at page nine um, under section one, uh, 1 Timothy 4.12 is quoted, uh, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. And it doesn't necessarily mean because you are young. Maybe uh, insert fill the blank, uh, maybe because you are in high school, or maybe because you aren't graduated yet, because you um, are a little bit older and wiser, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then it goes on in the student handbook. Though diverse in gifts and vocational interests, our aim is to come together as a community of learners united by our faith in God and a common vision. Our vision is to see all learning and personal development brought under the Lordship of Christ. Grace is intent upon the task of equipping each student to face each increasingly complex, confused, and a chaotic world. Yet, we wish not merely to equip the student to face the world, but to challenge the world with the power of the gospel, offering hope, peace, and healing. And what a better opportunity than right now. We've got kind of a chaotic and confusing world, and we are sending students, graduates, um, people of all ages, you know, all three modalities of graduate, online, and on-campus field of study into the world to um, to meet the needs of uh, a society that needs uh, some grounding. So um, when I think about that, and I think about each one of you that might be watching, I hope that you're asking yourself, how could I be a hero or how could I be a guide during this time? And as I break this down even more, I think about the four core values of Grace Christian University. I think about the fact that we are Bible-centered. I think about the fact that our graduates have a grace theology, an understanding of grace theology. I think about the fact that each one of our students is ministry focused. And I think about the fact that each one of our students has transformational relationships built into them as a core need and value. These are our four core values at Grace Christian University. And so as you are someone who maybe is a graduate, maybe you are someone who is a friend, a board member, uh, maybe you are someone who is a prospective student or a current student. Um, you are uh, part of this group of individuals that is understanding and coming into knowledge with these areas that I think will make a huge difference in our in our society. You add that with our grace mission statement, which is graduating godly individuals prepared to serve Christ in church and society. How great of a mission statement is that for such a time as this? And then as we finish up, Grace is a sending institution. We are sending you out into the world to be the mustard seeds and to be the flaming arrows that go into our society and create change. Mustard seeds create change when they are planted. Um, they spread quickly and they cover lots of ground. Um, we as a community of believers can do just that. Or you think about a flaming arrow in medieval times when an arrow, a flaming arrow goes into um, uh, an area where there's straw or brush or uh, woods that maybe is um, dried out and you see huge fires happen really quickly from flaming arrows. Grace is sending each one of you or has sent each one of you um, into the world to be an agent of Christ as we go forward in our society so that Christ can be glorified in all that we do. So as we finish up here, remember to keep an eye out for those uh, senior send-off um, videos that are coming in right after this. Uh, we had a bunch of our seniors uh, who are graduating um, give 60 seconds of their best uh, takeaways from being a student at Grace. And as we look to them 
We just want to thank each one of you in whatever constituency you are of grace, a friend, a prospective student, a student, a current student, or a graduate to be, uh, graduating tomorrow, um, that you will be sent out with a core values that will center you, with a mission that will send you, and that you will have um, an opportunity to be a mustard seed or a flaming arrow. God bless you in your pursuits, and let's take it away. Let's give it to the seniors now as they give us their best takeaways as a student at Grace Christian University. Thanks and God bless. Hey everybody, we are here. Um, just one piece of advice I'd like to give you is to unapologetically be yourself. My experience at Grace was one that really changed my life. There was a lot of ups and downs, but I grew a lot from those ups and downs. There was a lot of uh, moments that I took full advantage of just having that great godly college experience that you know I just never knew I could have with such a small community and it was just I loved it and there was times where you know you just think am I ever gonna make it through this am I gonna get past this and that's when you really lean into God this is the the one word I can say is trust I, I grew so much with the trust that I had in God that the moments where I felt like I was drowning and didn't know if I was going to get above the surface, but I just, I did. And I encourage you as you're climbing this mountain to finish and get to the top to just keep on keeping on because God's got you. Hey everyone, my name is Carson. I'm a senior here at Grace and my senior wisdom is don't be afraid to miss stuff. It's super easy to get caught up in grace culture and feel like you need to be at every single event and you need to make every single class or you'll never get your scholarships. Uh, but as someone who had to work full time and had to be on the Dean's List to be able to afford school, I can tell you that those things are certainly important. But I found college and grace far more fun uh, when I was willing to skip a class or willing to skip a chapel because I wanted to hang out with friends, either just walk around Pinery Park or eating Taco Bell in the commons at 2 a.m. Uh, whatever your thing might be, I promise you it's worth it. Uh, those little things make college what it really is. Those experiences and those memories will be more meaningful to you than any 8 a.m., I hope. Uh, and it won't ruin your career, I promise. Um, so be willing to miss stuff, just have fun. Hey guys, I just wanted to say, be invested in your campus. You've got a couple of years here while you get to call this your home, and your school. And it's a time to be invested in your classwork, in your professors, in your classmates, to go to chapel, go to small group. Uh, your community is going to be physically closer to you here than probably most anywhere else for the rest of your life. So take advantage of that and be invested in your campus. Hey everybody, this is Paul. Um, my advice for you is to be organized. Um, that is something I had to learn the hard way throughout my college career, and I wish I would have learned it freshman year. Um, but once I got organized, my grades got a lot better. I had a lot more peace about my life in general. So please, buy a calendar and stay organized. Hey guys, it's Haley. Um, what a weird way to say goodbye. But before I go, um, I just kind of wanted to tell you guys some things that I learned in my four years at Grace. Um, while I was at Grace, I was a student, an athlete, a manager, an uh, act group leader, a friend, a uh, dog walker, a babysitter. I did a lot of different things and I loved every single one of them. Um, but one thing that I learned over the years is that balance is essential. Um, I like to be all in on everything and that's a really good trait, but at the same time, you have to find balance in your life. You have to find when people need to have social lives and when people need to be working academically or when I need to be focused on my sport and a lot of those things were sometimes really hard to juggle all of it but I learned that like balancing it out and finding good in every single thing that I was a part of was really helpful for me to just really enjoy my whole experience at Grace. So I hope through the rest of the years that you're at Grace you're able to enjoy every bit of, bit of every little thing that you're doing um, and just soak it all in. And balance your life. Enjoy every part of it. Bye. 
Morning Grace, Troy here. One word of advice I have for students at Grace based on my four years at Grace would have to be truly finding your identity in Christ. I know that may sound cliche because we're all Bible college students, but truly understanding your role in the body of Christ and who God has truly designed you to be. Um, once you find that, you'll find it very easy to interact with others, to find the right friend group to uh, interact with people that God has put in your life. Um, but I think that starts with your identity fully being rooted in Christ as your identity, but also understanding what you're made to do. If there's one thing I want to share with you guys from my experience at Grace, it's to really get involved in the community. It's an incredible place of transformation and it's more than just a place to attend school. I just would really encourage you to get involved in events and get to know people outside your friend group to build relationships because those things are going to last far beyond college. During my junior year, I really kept to myself and I have very few incredible memories from that time. But during my senior year, especially because I was an RA, I was encouraged to get involved and to, and to build relationships with people and it made it one of the best years I've had in college so far. Hey everybody, Chris Smith here. Um, I wanted to share a verse with you guys um, that's been on my heart for years and years uh, one of the first verses that i heard at camp uh, as a kid uh, philippians 3 13 through 14 forgetting what is behind and straying towards what is ahead i press on towards the goal to win the prize for which god has called me have a word in christ jesus um, for me i've used that you know through my high school years navy being in the military and then here at grace even um don't what I would suggest to you underclassmen, don't uh, don't give up, don't give in to temptation, don't quit. Um, whether, doesn't matter how many people tell you, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, uh, believe in yourself. If you set your mind to something, do it. Finish that goal that you have. And above all else, trust in God that you will be okay and that you will accomplish your goal. Hope to see you guys soon. Hey guys. Um, my advice to all you freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors uh, is listen to metal. That's all I got for you. So I'm just kidding. That's not really what I have for you. Um, my actual advice is uh, look at those people that you spend your time with. Look at look at them around you and uh, invest in them. They have the potential to be friends for the rest of your life and. Um, it's up to you to invest in them. And uh, secondly, uh, be who you say you are. Um, God created you to be you, and that's it. You were not created to be me. You were not created to be your friends. You're not, you know, all any of that stuff. Uh, you were created to be you. Um, so grab hold of that and run with that, and don't let anybody else tell you any, anything different. So. Hey guys, Alan here. Um, just wanted to share a few things for senior senior time. And uh, the first thing I want to share with you is kind of general um, and very broad, but a lot of pastors, they explain like our eternity is this big long rope and our life is just a little section. And I'm sure you've all heard that and it's very cool, but in the same way, that's our college experience and our life is just this big long rope and maybe our college experience is only just a few years. Uh, I guess we can go longer, but for most of us, I would say, at least for me, it's just a few few short years. Um, but just like in the same way that our life means a lot in terms of where we're going to spend eternity and, and all these things, so our college experience determines what we're going to do with our future and where we're going to go, who we're going to meet, and um, just all of these things. So take it very seriously, but at the same time, um, just ex explore as much as you can. Um, and that kind of brings me to my second point of just explore God's creation um, just as absolutely as much as you can, not just through these four years when you have don't really have a full-time job maybe, or maybe you do, but just explore God's creation as much as you can, just exploring leaves and, and grass and the trees and architecture and just everything that God's created for us to enjoy. Um, just explore it to the absolute fullest that you can. Um, just have an absolute fun time at college and um, say hi to me when you're done. What's up guys, it's Justice Farron here for Senior Advice, um, and so I'm going to start with a Bible verse from James chapter 1, verse 22. But be doers of the word, 
and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And so my senior advice to the Grace community is that um, we would not be only hearers of the word, but that we'd also be doers, right? I love the Grace community. I love the Grace bubble, right? We get fed consistently with the gospel, with the Bible truth, right? But if we just let that sit there, if we just get stagnant and don't do it, it's all for nothing. And so my senior advice is just that you guys would go out that, that, that I could encourage us and, and suggest to you guys not to only stay in the grace bubble, but to go beyond that, to look for ways to which you can serve and be the light in all the communities that you know of. Hi guys, I'm Kim Busker, and one thing that I would like to leave with you guys as I'm leaving grace myself is um, be willing to be vulnerable, be willing to um, go out of your comfort zone and pour into others and allow others to pour into you. Um, leaving grace uh, is bittersweet, but it's um, really great knowing that I built amazing relationships and friendships that are going to last a really long time. And the only way that was done was by willing to be vulnerable with those around me and allowing the same for them to me. And so um, just be willing to do that and you're going to make amazing friends and amazing relationships that are going to last a lifetime. My name is Andrew. Uh, and my one word of advice is to ministry students specifically. If you think that you can go to Bible college and be a ministry student without attending a church regularly, then you're wrong. Um, you have to, have to, have to find a church that you can go to, that you can get connected with. Um, volunteer ministry, don't look to get paid yet. Um, you have the time, you have the energy, and I guarantee you that if you find a church um, with solid leaders that they will want to empower you and they will want to train you and they'll want to teach you um, how to do ministry. Uh, thanks to Rick Polisi and Jim Gamble for kind of putting this whole thing together. Uh, God bless everybody. Hey guys, um, I just want to say I really enjoyed my time at Grace and I'm so thankful for all the people that invested in me while I was at Grace. And I would just say make sure you really enjoy your time at Grace because it goes fast um, before you know it's over and you're a senior and you're graduating. And then um, two other things that I would encourage you with. Um, first is to like really uh, invest in the community at Grace. It's an awesome community, one that you won't regret um, investing your time in. And then the second thing is to just really take your faith seriously. Um, getting God's word every day, even if it's just for a, a little bit of time, and just really invest and grow in your relationship. Hey all, my name is Allison. Um, I graduated from Grace in December of 2019. Um, and sharing my senior advice is something I was really looking forward to. So I'm happy to have the opportunity to do it in video form. Um, I just have two things quickly here. Um, first, I wanna encourage you all to love fearlessly. Um, go get coffee with people, share your story with people if you can feel comfortable um, because those small encounters just grow into and to beautiful friendships and I just encourage you all to stick with your friends work through issues um, and continue growing and um, secondly I want to encourage all the young women at Grace um, sometimes there's going to be some adversity as you grow into ministry um, and I just want to encourage you all to worship fearlessly in the face of that because I think it's the bravest thing we can do as women of God and I just want to thank you all so much for making my Grace experience so special. Um, if I keep talking about it, I'm going to cry. Um, so I'm going to sign off now, but um, thank you so much. I hope you're all staying safe. Oh, hey there, everyone. I was just checking out those plants back there. Um, anyways, I'm Mary Caston, and as a senior at Grace, I just wanted to leave you with some reminders undergrad student at Grace and that would be to just remember that Grace is a safe place for you to grow in your faith so when you're taking those Bible and theology classes don't just do the work for the assignment but really challenge yourself and think about um, those questions and really try to create a firm foundation for your faith and figure out why you believe what you believe while you're here in this environment 
And also, because each one of us is at a different stage in our faith journey, I would just um, encourage you guys to try to form relationships with all sorts of different people and encourage one another, pour into people, have people who are pouring in, into you because transformational relationships are such a big deal to Grace and um, just how we care for people. So I just also wanted to thank you for those of you who have, who have poured into my life. I appreciate you very much and I hope you, to see you soon. Hey everybody, um, if there's one piece of advice I could give to you, it would be to not get comfortable where you're at. God is always moving and always has plans for you at any given time and you really are never going to be ready for them. And so with that being said, yeah, grace is a place where you're going to learn, you're going to grow. And it's going to be an amazing place that is going to invest a lot in you. But it's not the end. God has a lot in store for you past this, past college. So be ready to move because you never know when that time is going Hi all, this is Pastor Timothy Board with some words of blessing and encouragement for the other students at Grace Christian University. Three words, wisdom, vision, and courage. Wisdom to understand the times in which we live through the lens of a comprehensive biblical Christian worldview. Vision to see beyond what is to what ought to be. And courage to initiate decisive action. And so first of all, wisdom begins with being broken in awestruck humility before the vertical reality of sovereign majesty and therefore being intentional in taking the exclusive truth claims of biblical Christianity and the gospel of his grace and what he is doing today in the present dispensation to take his truth from where it is to where it ought to be because it's not. Envision therefore to see beyond what is to what ought to be to and therefore courage to initiate decisive action for the sake of a world in urgent need of living hope in Jesus Christ. Hi, Grace Seniors. My name is Samaria Reedy. And my words of advice that I want to share with you is to always keep God first. The Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If you continue to seek God first, he'll lead you, he'll guide you, he'll direct you towards what he has called for you to do according to his will for your life. Keep God first in everything that you do and he will keep you in perfect peace and he'll always instruct you on what you should do that will glorify him. So I encourage you, remain faithful during your journey here at Grace, even after you leave and know that God has a masterful plan for your life and that he loves you, he cares for you, and always continue to seek him and his will. Have a great day.